Hey fellow Freaksters, it's Tim from the Moratorium. Just here to remind you that if you enjoy what you hear, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We're just a couple of small town nerds trying to make sweet geek love to your ear holes, and we could use your support. Check out our website for movie reviews, links to social media, merch, movies, and more. You can find us at themoratorium.com. Now that that's out of the way, on with the shenanigans. Welcome to the Yarn Wall, a mini moratorium. I'm your host, Tim Kornman. On this episode, Jason and I take a long, drunken dive into the depths of IMDb. This is where we break down the last week's film and follow the yarn to make the thinnest and slightest connection to our next movie. It's kind of like a Six Degrees of Kevin Bacon game with slurred speech and double vision which can only explain the sudden jump into the middle of the thread of the conversation that is the yarn wall. She looks like she's ready to party. Get out of here, baby. It's my Bernie Casey voice. I'll have some of this. Yeah, he gets pimp slap. <laughs> Boozy floozy. Boozy floozy. Let me just check my levels a little bit. Yeah. I mean, as long as you don't change anything, I think we'll be just fine because... Uh, I mean, really, the only thing I could do is pop this little knob out of place, but it's... Mm, pop my knob out of place. Oh, dude. You were just getting ready to say it. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Maybe. Maybe. I don't think a knob is uh, American. I think that's like a British thing, your knob. <laughs> is that right? Yeah. Oh, I've got a couple of British people I'm going to talk about today. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. And some people who might not be British that I'm just going to use a British accent when I talk about them. Oh, are you sure you want to do that? <laughs> <laughs> my British accent is probably better than my normal voice. So, <laughs> How are you with a uh, Cajun accent, like Ooh. a New Orleans type? Can you do that? Uh, no, I, every time I do, I just go to back to Hard Target. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Van Damme doing a... Oh, man. He just says gumbo like a... T- Wait a minute. His Isn't his name gumbo or something? Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> Well, luckily, there is a website that will tell me all about it. Oh, what he, What was his name? Chance? His name was yeah, Chance. Yeah, Chance. I think his last name is unless, unless that's just something that Michael and I made up. My mama took one. Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So I'm on hard target here. And yeah, he's not on there. <laughs> they have Arnold Vosler is on there. <laughs> they have removed him from the movie. There he is. He's halfway down. It's Chance, Chance Bordeaux. Oh, it's got an R in it. How do you even pronounce that? Oh, Bord- uh, sh- Boudreaux? Boudreaux? Uh, Boudreaux. <laughs> oh, Boudreaux. Yeah. Boudreaux. You just had to say it like that. Now I, yeah. I think that was the dog's name and, um, Gross point blank that he assassinated. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fairly sure. Fairly certain. I didn't realize Arnold Vosloo was in this since we just talked to, about him. Oh, that's the guy from uh, The Mummy? The Mummy series of movies? Yeah. Was it his? Qu- I've completely forgotten those movies. I just had to make sure that his name, his last name was not. Gumbo, like I <laughs> thought. <laughs> I mean, even then, that would have been like, come on, guys. You're not even trying anymore. Wilford Brimley's in that movie. Oh, yeah, he is. Lance Henriksen's in that movie. Lance Henriksen's like one of the the bad guys, you know? Yeah, it's like, a, how does of it feel to be hunted? Oh, yeah. that's right. right. He kicks a gas can and shoots it in the air. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, Michael and I always came back with, uh, how does it feel to be stupid? Yeah. You tell me. And it was just like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, you know what's worse than Stallone just yelling everything he says? It, it's a French, like, Stallone yelling everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's even more incomprehensible. Can you imagine those two in a movie together? You'd need the subtitles to be on. 
Stallone and French Stallone. <laughs> yes, that's what that's what he's known as, the French Stallone. Uh, little known facts you can only get right here. Yeah, I think Van Damme might even be a better actor than Stallone. Ooh, I'm not sure. Um, <sighs> His movies are stinky, real stinky. Judge Dredd was on YouTube for some reason. I wasn't watching it, but mm-hmm. I was listening to him and Armand Asante yelling at each other. And, and? it's bad. Oh, okay. it's real bad. You can't even understand what he's saying. <laughs> he's just screaming at the top of his lungs. I am the law. Yeah that that line in particular is a real bad one. <laughs> it's the only one you can comprehend without. Mm-hmm. But that you remember he told uh, Barbara Walters that they had to pull him out with the tongs, and that's why his face that's right. does that. They they have to use the salad tongs. Yep. Wilford Brimley, Sven Ole Thorson, Ted Raimi is in it for God's sakes. Wilford Brimley, he, I think he uh, he has a bow and arrow in this, oh and just my like God. yeah. <laughs> Remember when Wilford Brimley like attacked somebody with a suitcase in the firm? I think he actually like beat somebody to death with a suitcase. And Yancey Butler. Yeah. The only reason I know who that is is she was in Witchblade. Your wife and I watched that show. Detective Sarah Pez Pezzini. <laughs> Pez is her uh, nickname, I guess, because nobody wanted to say Pezzini. I'm the great Pezzini. Sounds delicious. A little <laughs> pesto on it. Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> wow. Now that three of my tabs are Yancey Butler related. <laughs> didn't think we were. Well, I guess yeah. I never know exactly. We never know where we're going to head. And we never know when we're going to say, hey, welcome to the yarn wall. Hi. Well, I'm your host, Tim Cornman. And with me, as always, is Jason Walker, J-Dubs. Yep, just chatting about Hard Target. You know, when are we not talking about Hard Target? I'm dreaming about it when we're not talking about it. I have a few things I want to talk about. All right. And I know we've brought some grievances. We've brought it up before. I know we have. But it's because I get Craig Schaefer. Mm Mm-hmm. And Brian Krause mixed up. Now, who's Brian Krause? Brian Krause was in Sleepwalkers. Oh, okay, okay. Yes. That is the only movie that I know him from. Has he been in other things? Yes, actually. I, hmm. I watched something. There was something on yesterday that while I was nursing a hangover, I caught part <laughs> of. And the, the perfect time to, oh. for that to happen. And it was called... Uh, huh? Exactly. I already fucking lost man it. it's wow. one of the tabs that's open right yeah i'm looking at it. he's got actually 117 credits no shit looking yeah. at him i i i'm like okay he was on charmed and i know who he is now craig schaefer was on charmed right no no no, no. Brian, brian Krause. see that's why You're... oh man and i think it's because nightbreed did the wait that was like the only thing i really know from craig schaefer but looking through his shit, I'm like, holy crap, I know these movies. Yeah, wasn't he in Unnecessary Roughness? Uh, no, The Program. The Program. A less funny football movie. Yeah. Uh, that was then, This Is Now. Yes. That was then, This Was Now. That's Emilio Estevez. Okay. And it says, two juvenile delinquents find themselves growing apart. One is growing up and the other is staying young and reckless. It has Ramon Estevez in it. Mm, Ramon. Ramon. Kim Delaney. I don't know who that is. Ramon Estevez? Yeah, we talked about him when we went down the uh, Estevez uh, family stick. I mean, tree. Yeah. But he only has like a couple of credits. I mean, actor, 21 credits. Ramon is not a well-known Estevez. Okay. He lives with Joe. They have an apartment. <laughs> but that was then. This is now was 1985. Morgan Freeman's in this. Okay. Now, wait a minute. I have to say, wait a minute again. Are we talking about <laughs> Kraus or, or uh, Craig Schaefer? This is Craig Schaefer. Okay. See, damn it. Now, now I'm getting you confused. Yes. But it seems like on purpose. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, hey. Well, 
I was just looking at that was then this is now because I remember seeing the box for it. I never saw the movie. It was an S.E. Hinton novel. Okay. Emilio Estevez wrote the screenplay. Oh, I think I. Yeah, it's interesting shit. Uh, third credit down is Larry B. Scott. Okay. Go ahead and click on him if you want to. And the first thing you'll think of when you see his face is, oh, little old me, Lamar. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Great. From Revenge of the Nerds. This is the second and last movie he was in, right? Right. <laughs> no, he uh, has 66 credits. Wow, huh? He was one of the fighters in The Karate Kid. At the tournament. Okay. I'm like, wow. Oh, man. He was in space camp. And I was like, holy crap. Lamar was? He, yes. <laughs> okay. All right. He was in another stakeout. No. That's just for you. That's all for you. <laughs> now you're basically just like rolling the cursor around and whatever it falls on. Is- <laughs> he was in uh, Iron Eagle. Who? Lamar or Craig Schaefer? Lamar. Okay. You were changing gears on me. I can't keep up. <laughs> the mouse clicks on this episode are going to be uh, <laughs> so loud. Okay, let's just talk about Craig Schaefer and Brian Krause then. Please. Who do you want, who do you want first? I want um, Craig. His name's Craig. Craig. He did a voice in a Teen Wolf cartoon. <laughs> Good. Okay. What is Voyage of the Rock Aliens? I saw that. I clicked on it. Hey, oh, I remember that. <laughs> I actually remember that. No shit. Pia Zadora, Tom Nolan. I think the reason I know it is because it's got a really cool cover and like I probably watched the movie once and then never. It looks bizarre. I mean, when you've got Ruth Gordon playing the sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Berryman is just playing a guy named Chainsaw. Cool. So he has not been pigeonholed into any one role, you know, (laughs) he's a versatile actor. I love him. So no, never saw this movie Voyage of the Rock Aliens, but I had to click through it just to see Uh, Uh, some kind of wonderful. Right. I remember that. And all of that was before Nightbreed. Yes, of course. Yes. See, now I'm catching up to you. That was in this. Oh, I remember that box art for that was in this is now. Okay, Larry B. Scott. Yes. Okay. okay. I'm, on, I'm on. Hey, there you are. Hey, how you doing? He was in a movie called Split Decisions with Gene Hackman and Jeff Fahey. It was a boxing movie. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, but I've never seen this one. I like my boxing movies, too. Yeah, sure. Digs Town. So we have uh, River Runs Through It, Fire in the Sky. I mean, he's been around. Oh, is he? Yeah, he's one of uh, DB's friends. Yeah. I just watched that scene, you know, where DB is uh, tied to- Where they put that wet sheet over his face and they breathe- Yes, they put like a giant condom on him and (laughs) put stuff in his mouth. (laughs) That was really gross. It is very jarring. I don't know how to feel about that movie. It's equal amounts. You're kind of getting what you want, but it's kind of boring. It goes on for a minute. Yeah. Um, okay, so Sleep With Me, 1994. Craig Schaefer mm-hmm. is like right in my, you know, sweet spot for all this bullshit, you know. Love Clive Barker, love Nightbreed. But uh, he's in Sleep With Me. Mm-hmm. And I don't know why. It must have been just on cable TV a lot. I can't say that I've seen it. It's good. I think this is the movie that has that weird scene... I think that's it, where uh, Quentin Tarantino like shows up at a party. Okay. And yeah, you talked about that. The guy that wants to be a screenwriter or a director or whatever, they just kind of chat briefly in a kitchen. I think maybe you're right. I'm, I'm flipping through here. Joey Lauren Adams, Parker Posey, June Lockhart. Yeah, there's Quentin Tarantino down at the bottom as said. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. That checks out. Yeah, anyway. He's like smart Craig Schaefer in that movie because he's got tiny little like wire rim glasses. <laughs> Not that he's dumb in anything. It just seems like he always plays the <laughs> kind of. It really sounded like you were just calling him out. No, I'm just saying he's usually cast as a jock in these movies. So if you go back to looking at Brian Krause, then he doesn't have such a great 
It's not, I mean, he's got tons of credits, don't get me wrong, but maybe he just doesn't stand out. He's got 117 credits, but he doesn't stand out in the type of movies that we like to watch. So yeah, Sleepwalkers would have been that movie, and I don't think it did very well. I mean, I, mm-hmm. of course, went to the, mo- the theater to see it, you know. There's something real. I mean, their whole relationship, the mom and the son, is just bizarre. Mm-hmm. And I maybe I just like had that in the back of my mind the whole time. It's a weird movie. It does have Mod Chin Amic in it, though. Still haven't figured out how to say her name. I know. It's one of these days. Somebody's going to have to correct us in all our names. I think I'm saying, I think I've heard it said before, and it's Mod Chin Amic. Okay. <laughs> but you can just say it all as one. Mm hmm. And it sounds like uh, like Reaganomics or something. <laughs> I don't know. He was in Return to the Blue Lagoon. How many movies have they done uh, of just all in all about the Blue Lagoon? Uh, I think there's just two. Well, I don't know. Did they make a series out of it? Is it always incest? Uh, I think so. Oh, there's a TV movie, The Blue Lagoon, The Awakening. <laughs> uh, that's, uh, okay yeah that is just they're not even trying anymore they're just saying there's gonna be some young kids on screen in little clothing here's something i did not know the blue lagoon was a 1949 film same story same story in the victorian period two children are shipwrecked on a tropical island in the south pacific and fall in love while growing up together did I just make up the part about them being brother and sister? <laughs> no, I think it was something like that. They were like cousins, maybe. Maybe I'm just thinking of uh, Flowers in the Attic. Well, uh, Hey, uh, let's not forget Brian Krause as Jackson Slate in, uh, <laughs> po- <laughs> in, in Poseidon Rex. <laughs> that looks like one of those uh, Asylum movies, like uh, Sharknado or something. Okay. Oh, it looks awful. But the movie I watched last night or yesterday, mm-hmm. it was it was supposed to be like a haunted house type story. It just wasn't very interesting. But they had a it's called Be Afraid. That's what it was. 2017. Okay. I've seen this setting many times now that there is an old uh, I think they're saying it was a train track tunnel. Okay. Going into the side of a mountain. There's some kind of creepy things going on, but nothing spectacular. They talk They talk about the things that you can see in your periphery and not. Oh, okay. I kind of like that. I was just going to say, like, trains going into tunnels. Mm-hmm. That's like when two people that you want to get together are like, finally make it to the bedroom and then. Start to get you know, a little intimate, and then it just cuts away to like trains you know, in the tunnel, dr- oil drilling or something. <laughs> you know, <laughs> hot dogs being made. So he was in a movie called Kakoi the Boogeyman. Kikoi? Yeah, Kikoi? <laughs> I also was trying to pronounce that. What was the uh, the demon thing in The Outsider? It was El Kikoi or something like that. Errol oh, that's, Cuco. I didn't watch El that. El Cuco. Well, you read the I book. Didn't. Yeah, but that's not in it. They just made that up for the TV show, I think. That thing doesn't have a name, really, I don't think. Okay. I thought they talked about El Cuco because she brought up the films, and this is in the book. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I see what you mean. But, the, I mean... Well, okay, I get it. But maybe not the same thing. That's just what I thought when I saw that was yeah. El Cuco. All right. Okay, do we have our Brian Krause, Craig Schaefer? I think we've... Fished out okay? Yeah. I okay. mean, the main things you need to know are Nightbreed and... Sleepwalkers. Uh, oh, I see that now. Kukui. Kukui. Yeah. Kukui. Because <laughs> just a... Cu- couple of great guys all right clicking him on and watch hard target i don't know how that was part of the discussion (laughs) (laughs) just watch it i think that goes back to arnold Vosloo, which was way Mm. way off the trail always get back to i have even (laughs) forgotten his name what do you how do you say it Vosloo. Vosloo. (laughs) oh man
I was going down some different paths, mm-hmm. just looking at some different things. I came across, you know how we talk about typecast characters often, and there's a guy by the name of Joseph Whip. Whip? Whip. W-H-I-P-P. Okay. okay. Who, it looks like he's been typecast as a freaking cop so many times. Cops and guards. His like profile picture on IMDb is he kind of looks like Bill from King of the Hill. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a current picture of him, so I can't really place who he is yet. I don't recognize him. It's a current picture, but you see the picture has an autograph on it. <laughs> does it really? It sure as shit does. I didn't see that. He wrote it to himself, I'm I'm sure. I guess. Dear Joseph, thank you for being such a good fan. Yep. Signed, Mr. Whip. I, he's like, I'm going to frame this. <laughs> <laughs> he's been in a lot of... TV. Jo- uh, yeah, a lot of TV, but a lot of Wes Craven stuff, too. Oh, okay, yeah. So he was Sergeant Parker in Nightmare on Elm Street. But he also showed up and, like, he was a detective in Chiller. Okay. And I guess I didn't realize that was a TV movie. I know we talked about this just recently. Yes, we did. Uh, But I don't remember (laughs) what we settled on. There is a little chunk of his credits in the 80s that are like, wow, I know all of those movies. Mm -hmm. Beyond being in Dukes of Hazzard. Hill Street Blues, Scarecrow and Mrs. King, Moonlighting, Highway to Heaven, Twilight Zone. Wow. Uh, Stir Crazy Series. Ooh, I don't remember that at I don't all. either. That was 1985. Why did they make a series out of that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I have seen that movie so many damn times. Okay, so, but if you scroll up a little bit to the mid-80s, mm-hmm, he I'm is, there. or late 80s, I... Mm-hmm. Uh, Golden Girls, Disorderlies, Cop Number One, and Disorderlies. <laughs> I had to explain Disorderlies to my wife. Uh, I think it was just last night, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> and her eyes just kind of glassed over. Uh-huh. And, oh, I know why. It was because uh, that guy from uh, General Hospital. That's like the wormy. Um, is he the guy's son? I don't remember. But he was on soap operas, like, forever. I'm talking about from General Hospital, the guy's name's Anthony Geary? Yep, that's him. That's him? Yep. Hey. Winslow Lowry. I remember that name. I've seen this movie so many times. I loved this movie. I didn't realize he was also in UHF. Yes, right. I think I saw Disorderlies. This is about the time when, you know, there was a... A single movie theater in Tahlequah. Mm-hmm. And that's what we did. I mean, we just walked into town and... Whatever was playing. Yeah. Between what was at the movies, across the street to the arcade. That's where I spent all my time. That sounds like a good time. It was. I just saw a bunch of shit that nobody else wanted to see. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. And this, I'm sure, was one of them. Yeah. Uh, he was also in The Hidden. Yes. I need to revisit this movie. I have watched it recently and can confirm that it is still a good movie. Awesome. That's what I wanted to hear. Now, my love for... Uh, Claudia Christian. Agent Cooper. Uh, well, maybe. Her too. Kyle McLaughlin. Kyle McLaughlin might have something to do with why I like gotcha. this movie so much. And Michael Nori. I get him mixed up with the cop from... Uh, Twin Peaks. I can't think of his name either. Nah. Clue Gulliger is in that, by the way. Not to be confused with <laughs> Clue Gallagher, who is a real estate guy in Austin, That's Texas. That's good. Good stuff. <laughs> the Hidden is chock full of some character actors. Lynn Shea is in that. Oh my God, she had to be young. She's never been young. Who wrote that? Because that is the craziest. Written by Jim Koof. As Bob Hunt. Oh, that is weird. <laughs> Bob Hunt sounds a lot like a some kind of porn name. Uh, I guess he created the uh, Grimm TV series. Okay. Oh, my God. <laughs> As Bob Hunt, he wrote The Boogans. 
Are you kidding me? No, I am not kidding Whoa, you. He also wrote man. Up the Creek. What? Yep. Okay. IMDb. <laughs> that, it's like IMDb has become self-aware <laughs> and is just fucking with us. Yes, exactly. They'll never find him. <laughs> he wrote another stakeout. <laughs> oh my God, he did. We need to stop the podcast yeah. right now and talk about this. <laughs> 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 he he wrote the original stake out too. Secret oh Admirer. My God. Class. What are the fucking chances? How did we not know this guy? I don't know because he wrote National Treasure. He wrote Rush Hour. Koof. Oh man. That's insane. The Hidden 2? I don't know if the, I knew. I knew there was a sequel. Um, I've never seen it. Up the Creek. The Hidden, Stakeout. I mean, what's going on here? The Boogans? When are you going to, when are we going to do that? Soon. Not okay. this next week, but soon. Okay. I was just looking at S- Secret Admirer not too long ago because that was, mm-hmm. that was Kelly Preston. And we lost mm-hmm. her this year. Yeah. Wow. God. C. Thomas Owl, Lori Laughlin, Kelly Preston, D. Wallace, Cliff D. Young, Fred Ward, Casey Samasco. Courtney Gaines. Oh, man. Corey Haim. That was all in Secret Admirer? That's in Secret Admirer. Wow. See, I feel like that's a movie that I watched a lot on cable back in the day. And maybe because it had a John Hughes feel to it, but it wasn't a John Hughes film. Yeah, but like slightly hornier. I think that's the all that separates some of those movies is I don't think John Hughes ever made it horny, you know, which he could easily have. Oh, easily. Um. Yeah, that's crazy. And I want to watch Secret Admirer. Put this guy back on the radar, Jim Koof. Yeah. Thanks, Jim. You're giving us a lot of fucking cool movies. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I dig it. All right. I have no idea. Where where, where were we? <laughs> <laughs> Disorderlies? No. Oh, yeah. That was a little bit ago. Tony Plana played Miguel in <laughs> Disorderlies. I really like him. He is... Uh, He's um, the dad in Ugly Betty. My wife got addicted to Ugly Betty a few months ago, and I basically watched all of them with her. It's really good. But uh, yeah, he's the dad. And And is that not the chick from uh, Superstore? Yes, it is. Yeah. America Ferreira. I don't know if there's an A at the end of her name. It's either Ferrer or Ferreira. There's an A at the end of it. That means anything. Never watched it. It's really good. She's awesome. I'll take your word for it. So it's Superstore. It's funny, too. I've watched most of those. All right. Hey, I am clicking off Joseph Whip. I just wanted to bring him up because, you know, typecast characters. Hang on just a second before I close these out. What does the C in C. Thomas Howell stand for? (laughs) Do you know? (laughs) Click on him. This is not a... (laughs) We are not playing a game here. Yeah, this isn't funny. Stop <laughs> laughing because this isn't funny. I need to know this. Uh, Christopher. Hmm. Oh. I was hoping it would be like Cregoria or something. <laughs> something really weird. So Cut had, rag. Like, Transylvanian. Yeah, Conrad would have been good. <laughs> I said Cut rag, but Conrad. Oh, Cut rag. I'm sorry. I thought you were. <laughs> now you're just besmirching his name. <laughs> Cunt rag. How does that even... Oh, I think I know what that is now. Uh, the more I think about it, and you disgust me, mm-hmm. sir. It's all British. <laughs> I'm going to say something that you are either going to be like, yeah, of course, or what the fuck. He was married to Ray Don Chong. Did you yes, know that? I read that just recently. I, I did not know that. There's a lot of weird marriages in Hollywood that have lasted just a small amount of time. Yeah, exactly. For us to make fun of. What if he had changed his name when they got married and it would be <laughs> Cunt Reg Thomas Hal Don Chong. <laughs> awesome. Sometimes the guys do that. I think in Hollywood. He was almost Marty McFly in uh, Back to the Future. Oh, wow. Uh, I was going back to read. I just saw this earlier. Craig Schaefer mm-hmm. wasn't married, but he had a daughter with Gabrielle Anwar. Oh, really? Yeah. Good job, Craig. 
Yeah, that's probably a good looking kid too. Name's yeah. Willow. Willow Anwar. That's a fun name. We've been a lot of fun names today. I think Gulager still is probably the <laughs> number one. <laughs> For some reason, I came across just looking at other people here. Um, Charles Bronson, just mm-hmm. because I've never really looked up Charles Bronson before. Mm-hmm. The only thing I know about him is he was roommates with, um, Jack Klugman. Yes. <laughs> I just read that. <laughs> Literally the only thing I know about him. He was once considered for the lead role in Conan the Barbarian. What? It didn't say which role because the lead in my book would have been, Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> yes. Most people would say that he is the star of the, he is the titular star of the film. <laughs> the titular barbarian of he the is film. He is the titular barbarian. Uh, he, he was once considered for the role of Snake Plissken. Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. But Carpenter felt that he was too old and too tough. God, that would have been a really <laughs> dark film if it yeah. hadn't been Kurt Russell. It literally would have been like oh, yeah. five minutes long because he just walks up and shoots everybody he sees. Everybody. Tested and read for Christopher Reeve's role in Superman. Oh, you mean Superman? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Why are you playing coy on here, IMDb? <laughs> we know he's fucking Superman. <laughs> Uh, but that would have been a much different movie. Oh, yes. Especially when he has a full mustache <laughs> <laughs> and a gun. <laughs> that is literally what would have happened. Yes. You've got laser sight. Why are you shooting everybody with a three fifty seven? Huh. He's not a good actor, Charles Bronson. No? You don't think? I guess Death Wish is like the only... I guess it's my favorite movie that he's in. No, that's not true. He's in uh, Once Upon a Time in the West, which is the most crazy, brutal movie Mm -hmm. ever. Uh, He turned down the titular. It actually says this. Thank you, IMDb. He turned down the the role of the titular character's father in Billy Madison. (laughs) (laughs) What? So who is the father? I don't know if I've ever seen that movie. I am not really? a huge uh, uh, Adam Sandler. Is that Darren McGavin? Was it really? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I can. All right. Anyway, I thought that was funny. He was considered for Gregory Peck's roles in Cape Fear and The Omen. He was that... going to be the dad in Cape Fear? Yeah, 1962 Cape Fear. Yeah, I mean, he made a lot of money, it looks like, uh, out of... All the Death Wish movies. Fuck, dude. There's like six of them. Yeah. And it said he made $5 million to $6 million for Death Wish 5. Jesus. In 1975, when he did Hard Times, a uh-huh. million dollars. Another boxing movie. Wow, really? I don't think I've ever seen that. Death Wish, he was paid a, a million dollars. That was in 1974. Was a, he made a ton of money. It did say that he left. Uh, $45 million in his estate. So hmm. he was considered to replace John Wayne in Rooster Cogburn. Again, that is <laughs> a, a not. How about this? Billy Crystal claimed that Bronson was offered the role of Curly in City Slick. Now that I buy. He is, <laughs> he is a very like. Him and Jack Palance could have, like, a growl off, you know? (laughs) Just years and years and cartons and cartons of unfiltered cigarettes. Oh. And it says here, yes, he was an an avid smoker. He was a fan of smoking. Yes. He was one of its bigger (laughs) proponents. He was a cigarette proponent. Uh, He died of lung cancer, COPD, congestive cardiomyopathy, and respiratory failure. So his body basically said, fuck this. I'm done. (laughs) I'm so done with you. It says right here that he was considered for the role of uh, Ferris Bueller. So I think that that's really (laughs) weird. (laughs) You know, against playing against type and that. (sighs) All right, clicking off of Charles Bronson. Thank goodness. Should we talk a little bit about uh, Gargoyles? Because I, I, sure. I, 
really am kind of disappointed the, for the the lack of Diana's yeah, heard in the I, podcast. <laughs> I thought about that too. That was just the joke from that movie for years and years. And but now I'm 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 torn because knowing that it was Vic Perrin's voice and not Bernie Casey's voice, what would the movie have been? <laughs> If they use Bernie Casey's voice, it would have been like a black exploitation movie, <laughs> like think? him slapping that old gargoyle on the ass is like yeah, that's just a taste of what you would get. <laughs> He's like, get out of here, baby. I'll see you later. <laughs> Got this other young thing to talk to. Go t- go tend to those eggs. I'll be yeah, right go there. Sit on an egg. <laughs> <laughs> that is weird, and it does kind of change my like perspective of the film a little bit. Hmm. A little bit. Not a lot. Are we to assume that gargoyles lay eggs now? Those are some big fucking eggs, too. (laughs) I mean, those did not. (laughs) There are a lot of questions about that. She was the only female, right? Unless one of the babies were female. And so you're thinking, like, I mean, like, eggs don't get bigger. You know what I mean? The thing inside gets bigger and then busts out. Right. So it's not like she had little chicken eggs and they grew into those big things. That is what I'm thinking here. Yeah. So, I mean, that's like alien, uh, you know, the queen alien, like fallopian tube is like a, you know. A meter wide. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and covered in slime. Anyway. Anyway. I just thought of that and I thought it was a little... Uh, unnerving to think that something that big would come out of a gargoyle's yeah butthole is that what you're gonna say looking at gargoyles maybe appreciate scott glenn a little bit more you know i i love scott glenn rugged handsomeness yeah he is 81 years old probably his best role i think was silence of the lambs yeah my wife was watching that just the other day did did he also play him in um was he, was, was he in Hannibal? Wait a minute. No, no. the whole cast changed for the Exactly. He's a pretty damn versatile actor, you know? He's, like, mm-hmm. his whole beginning career was, like, kind of rough around the edges, you know, bad boy kind of thing. And then he just aged into cops, I guess. Jack Crawford was played by Dennis Farina. In the man, in Manhunt? In Manhunter, mm-hmm. yes. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, didn't Harvey Keitel play Jack Crawford? In Hannibal? Was it in Hannibal? I could not tell you. Scrolling through, scrolling through. Or maybe I was reading that Crawford does not show up in Hannibal. Maybe not. I think he's in the book. He's not in the movie. Or I love Silence of the Lambs. And I'm not real crazy about I mean, I do like Manhunter. Who is that? Michael Mann that did that? Yes. Correct. Um, and yes, Harvey Keitel played Jack Crawford in Red Dragon. Okay. I was looking up Frankie Faison. I am already there, dude. I wanted to see if he was, um, you know, the guy from Scrubs' dad. Um, you ever watch Scrubs? Mm-hmm. Because his name's Faison. I don't see anything. I there, don't yeah. either. Maybe that's a... I've never heard that name before, I guess, is why I looked it up. Gotcha. But Frankie, he appeared in all of the Hannibal movies, Hmm. except for Hannibal Rising, which was the origin story, right? Uh, Yeah. Yes. It would have been really weird if he would have shown up there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) He's in White Chicks. That is a disturbing movie. (laughs) Seeing them in makeup like that is... Very disturbing. Yeah, I like him a lot. He's in quite a few things. Oh, of course he was in Do the Right Thing. He's been in some TV. And do you remember Hawk? The kind of... um, It's actually called A Man Called Hawk. Yes. But like the spinoff of uh, Spencer for Hire. Gotcha, yeah. Does everybody like that guy so much? I think his name... Yeah, his name's Avery Brooks. Dude, I love Spencer for Hire. Robert Ulrich. Ulrich. Sure. Let's not get mired down in TV. I'm just still looking at Manhunter because it's just such a good movie. Yeah. I need to see that one again. 
and forever made um, Tom Noonan a uh, creepazoid. He's not going to play a heartthrob or anything anytime soon. No, I need to look at his career some more. We might be able to do a deep dive on him. Oh, for sure. Because I was flipping back and forth just trying to find my guy. I will say uh, in Manhunter, though, I really did enjoy William Peterson playing Will Graham. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's like perfect. That's exactly who I think of when I read that book. But as per the character, going straight into my deep dive, okay. I want to talk about Hugh Dancy. <whistles> Hugh Dancy played Will Graham in the TV series of Hannibal. Okay. Have you ever seen this? No. You've never it's it is worthy. It is damn worthy. Mads Mickelson is the is yes. a Hannibal. And it at first it took me a minute to get used to him. Mm-hmm. And he he won me over. Gotcha. It was he was incredible. For being like an I think it was a prime time series on like one of the major networks. Mm-hmm. It was you know, but it was pushing the boundaries for grotesqueness yeah is that a word grotesqueness yeah sure Gr- sure Gro- it just seems like there's too many s's in that grotesqueness yeah you're definitely putting an extra s in there. okay for your basic uh you know big three it was really pushing the boundaries oh i don't think i realized i figured it was like a uh, fx show or something where they could show gross stuff no you'd think it was very well done. And Hugh Dancy really does a great job playing Will Graham. Mm-hmm. He is uh, unstable. Yeah. And it he plays it so well. Yeah. I highly recommend it. Cool. Uh, he's been in a few things back down the list here. He was in Black Hawk Down. That seems to be the only one that I would know him from, uh-huh. I think. He was in King Arthur. Oh, yeah. Was that another TV show? No, that was a movie. Oh. With Clive Owen. Oh, right, right, and right. And Mads was in that as well. Uh, Joel Edgerton. Right. Ray Stevenson. Yeah. Kiera Knightley. Yeah. Ray Stevens, the guy uh, that did Guitar Man. <laughs> Stevenson. No, Guitar Zan. Um, there's a Stellar Skateboard is in there. Oh, right. So, Ray Winstone. Oh, I forgot about Ray Winstone. Man, I love that dude. I haven't seen him in a minute. Oh, he's so good in... Um, Everything. Sexy Beast. Yes. That is a great movie. Um, So, this is your guy? So, this is my guy, Hugh Dancy. A Brit? A Brit. Is that okay? Uh, I think that's more than okay. All right. He played uh, the voice of Edgar Allan Poe. And this is a biography of L- Edgar Allan Poe hmm. that wraps around his most famous tales and several of his poems. I would be very interested in listening to it. Yeah, that. sure. If you can. Or I say listening to it. Right. It's, it's animated. Oh, it's an hour and 30 minutes. That's interesting. Uh, Alfred Molina, he plays a uh, whip stealer. voice in a segment. So. I thought you were going to say whip stealer. <laughs> <laughs> that's all that's primarily what i think it is but hugh dancy also he was in our idiot brother which i'm oh i've seen that i've seen it not not a great movie in my boring. book but let's see he was in a series just recently called the path okay which was kind of a religious cult type thing cool I've seen most of it, mm-hmm. and it's good, but it's also one of those, I don't know, when you get start dancing around religious crap, it it, it starts, hmm. sometimes it gets a little old, mm-hmm. but it has Michelle Monaghan, Aaron Paul is in it, and Hugh Dancy. Those are your three front runners right there. Hmm. It was a good series. I don't know that I ever finished it. So on to some of the trivia for Talented Brit. Hugh Dancy. Mm-hmm. His nickname is Fancy Dancy. Man, <laughs> I I probably could have guessed that if you'd given me just... Of course his name is Fancy Dancy. And he just has to go home crying with wet crumpet on his face. <laughs> uh, a little thing I didn't know. Uh, he's married to Claire Danes. What? 
Yeah. He has trademark as delicate, asymmetrical features, <laughs> mellow, soothing voice, mm -hmm. cascading curls, soulful That's blue eyes, hair. and I'm, I'm getting hard just thinking about it. <laughs> uh, he's a good looking dude. Sort of looks like the British version of the guy from Mindhunter. Oh. Um, man, I can't wait until that series comes back out. Yeah, the path actually looks kind of cool. Homeland, which everybody says is great. Never seen it. Never seen it. He looks like the male version of the girl from Stranger Things. The kind of, she has a like, small little face, you know. Okay, sure. It says here, he was he auditioned to play Hannibal Lecter and Hannibal Rising. So very interesting. Interesting little thing. He's an avid collector of fake hands. Okay, great. His fascination started after having seen a set of wooden hands on a film set. Okay. So that's kind of unnerving. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> if there's ever, you know... A murder spree involving people that are missing their hands. It's like he just shows up at the precinct and be like, uh, it's it's me. You guys were going to get me eventually anyway. So I just figured I would help you guys out. I did it. There's a whole box of hands in my trunk. Just a box of hands. <laughs> Seriously, who does that? That is strange. Uh, stumbled into acting at the age of 13 after being sent to the school theater as punishment for misbehaving at school. <laughs> and basically everybody was calling him fancy dancy and just. <laughs> <laughs> he was voted prettiest boy and prettiest girl in college. Yeah. So <laughs> no problem there. The hand thing's fine. Everything's fine. He is def definitely does not need psychiatric help. This is all going to make a just a really well-rounded person. Yes. Calling fancy dancy, having collect hands, and <laughs> that's just And last but not least, he was considered for the role of Batman in Batman Begins. Okay. Anything so. would have been better. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've never seen those movies. So I just can't. Can't do it. I don't know why. You can't do Christian Bale no. as Batman? No. Oh. I, I I don't know. It just has no... Of all the things you refuse to watch. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. I mean, you'll watch Anne of Green Gables, but you won't watch Batman? I, I, yeah. <laughs> I'm now a fan of Green Gables had like... Ninja stars in her knickers or something. That would be cool to. I like the idea of Batman. I just don't. But I like the idea of Anna Green Cable oh with my Ninja God. Stars better. Let's write that right now. <laughs> Stopping the cast. All right. So Hugh Dancy, I just thought that he uh, he should be rallied around. I think he has a good career started. You know, he is. He was born in seventy five. He's about your age. Mm -hmm. And he's British and good looking. Is he? He's not British in Hannibal, is he? Or does he have a British accent in Hannibal? Does he have an American no. accent? Okay. American accent. No. Gotcha. And same thing with the path. There are a lot of guys like that, that you find out that they're like British or Australian. And you're like, some of them are like, oh, really? And some are like, yeah, we know. He, he, he <laughs> has to play a redneck because that's the only way that he can, you know, kind of mask his accent. Unfortunately, we cannot play British actors because, no. yeah, it just comes off sounding really, really bad. Yeah, we're not skinny and tall enough either. Pale enough. Oh, I'm pale enough. Yeah, see? You've got curly yeah. locks. Fancy Dancy was also in Basic Instinct 2. Really? Oh, yeah. I've never, I've never seen it. I don't know why. I mean, it's still Sharon Stone. I guess she's like, you know... <sighs> Nobody's talking about my cooch anymore. I got to start in another one of these films. Maybe. Uh, it also had uh, David Morrissey in it. Uh, David Morrissey was, uh, he played the governor in uh, Walking Dead, but also a British guy. Right. With a cracker accent. I, I, no, I guess he did have sort of an accent, but wasn't really like. And uh, David Thewlis was also in Basic Instinct too. Enough of my British guys here. 
That's a lot of face. A lot of face. Thuless has at least two people's faces on his one face. <laughs> <laughs> I like him a lot. Is he still? I guess he just does British stuff. Yeah. But no, he's actually going to be in Avatar 2 and 3. Oh my God. Why are they making those movies? I don't know. Nobody is excited about them. I mean, we'll go and see them, probably. <laughs> but it's not like. I don't know. I could not tell you one thing about the Avatar, the Avatar world. Oh, sure you can. They're blue. <laughs> I mean, sure you can. You can talk about Avatar basically because of Stephen Lang. That's all you yeah, need. Yeah, I guess. Stephen Lang's a badass. Yeah, big robot fight. All right, so we can close the door on uh, Hugh Dancy. Yep. Hugh, we'll see you again, I'm sure. Bye, Fancy Dancy. Fancy, fancy. Be throwing a biscuit at your head later. <laughs> <laughs> the crowd goes lethargic. So, um, did you say during that last segment? Did you ever say, "Here's your one chance, fancy. Don't let me down." Did you say that, <laughs> or am I just imagining that? You're just imagining that. Well, I said it. Somebody had to say it. Okay, it had to be said. I feel like he's going to come up again. You think so? Mm-hmm, fancy dance. I mean, he hasn't been in a whole lot of stuff, but uh, I think he's going to come back around anyway. I think he's a uh, true psychopath. He's got a long career ahead of oh. him. Oh, yeah, of a hand collector. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> tales of a hand collector. He could be hand hands Gruber. He could be handable. <laughs> <laughs> you got it too. One or the other. Either hand handable. <laughs> I think it has to be handable. <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> oh my god, that'd be a real like rabbit hole. Like, okay, there was this movie, and it inspired the actor to become a serial killer with a punny name. No, Ray Liotta straight up gets his brains eaten in that movie. Oh yeah, and fed to him. Yeah, yeah, right. And roasted slightly and fed to him. Beautiful, beautiful. All right, are you ready to try out this new thing? Yeah, sure. All right, so possible news segment. I mean, possible. It's a new segment we're going to try out here. Yeah, it might just be once a new segment. But, yeah, I don't know how to introduce it. Uh, It's just cue the music. Um, Yeah, yeah, cue the music. Musical interlude. (laughs) Can you sing for me? (laughs) It's my new. (laughs) That's that's your new band. (laughs) Yeah. My new band. Yeah. So we were just thinking that we wanted to do a separate little segment that might, you know, because we typically focus on, you know, actors when we do those deep dives. Well, this is, you know. This could be a lot of different things. It could be, you know, the cast, the crew, the special effects, anything. It's uh, literally the goulash of the episode. Yeah. It's like the goulash. You just throw a bunch of shit in a pot, peanut butter, raw meat. (laughs) Possibly a noodle or two. Noodle, fun noodles. The leftover vegetables that you didn't finish off at dinner. That'd be cruel if, like, all your leftovers were just, like, in a Tupperware and your mom made you eat it at the end of the week. (laughs) That's a horror movie. That's what we need to be doing. Okay, so, I this, the reason I had to look this guy up, and I've I've known about a lot of this stuff for a long time, and I got some, I got some more little details now, Mm -hmm. but uh, it's a guy that had a vision 
of, uh, you know, sugar plum fairies. He just really wanted to make some horror movies with zero budget. So his name is Don Doler. Yeah, we brought him up before. Yes, but his movie—I mean, his movies are basically like they're Super Eight movies, and they they look like home movies. Basically, you know, the quality's not great, um, but what it lacks in quality is just his <laughs> enthusiasm for it. It's got a lot of really. Yes, inventive uh, special effects. Okay. Okay. What movie in particular are you talking about? Well. All of them? All of them have his uh, style, I guess. The Alien Factor 1978 being his first? Uh, n- not his first. I think Fiend is uh, his first actual movie. Nope, that's listed in 1980. The Alien Factor was 78. Right. But I remember seeing the box art for The Alien Factor. Never, ever watched it. Okay, I see. Yeah, 78 and then Fiend is his second movie. Wow, so, like, Alien Factor is my favorite one out of the three that I've seen. They typically have a roster of his, like, friends and family that are acting in the movie. Okay. Anyway, he's from Baltimore. He started making movies in the... In the 60s, just kind of experimenting with like Super 8 and stuff like that. And okay. uh, he also had a magazine called Cinemagic. It sounds fabulous. Yes. And I've had a couple of these that, you know, I picked up from like comic book stores and stuff. And basically they're like, um, they're kind of little how to guides um, for, you know, amateur filmmakers that might not have a lot of money. So they've got to create their own effects and, you know, weird shots and stuff. And I looked at a couple of these, and um, they really do have like step by step instruction for young filmmakers, and really? uh, they're really they're they're awesome. I mean, I would like to just have some just to have around, you know, because the covers are always really cool and interesting. Yeah, so check those out. At, I think they actually have some of them that are like scanned, you know, online that you can okay. read. So I, the first time I ever heard of him was looking up. Um, there's an MST called Pod People. I think mm-hmm. you're probably uh, familiar with it. Mm-hmm. Well, I don't know the exact story, but for some reason, a guy like bought up a bunch of of these uh, old kind of B movies, and the opening and ending credits are scenes from another movie. <laughs> <laughs> I still do not understand the purpose of this. So Pod People, which, as far as I know, has nothing to do with Don Dohler. No, I can't seem to find anything either. I was like, where are you going with this, counselor? The opening of Pod People is kind of a slowed down, what do they call it? Like posterization. It's got some weird effect on the scenes that you're watching. So as the credits are rolling, it's showing scenes from a movie called Galaxy Invader. Uh, which Don Dollar also did, has nothing to do with the rest of the movie. They're just thrown in there as a opening <laughs> and a and a. I, I can't imagine why they would do that. Now, Galaxy Invader. I remember this box. Yes, I got to read this off. Okay, an alien is hunted by a gang of drunken hillbillies <laughs> who saw him crash land his spaceship. <laughs> that is the most succinct, uh, accurate description of any movie ever that is exactly what happens that is awesome i want to see this i feel like i could make a movie now that that was the plot to and have a lot of fun with that oh you know what i mean i bet oh my god dude a mob a drunken mob drunken hillbilly mob and they're in baltimore can you imagine that (laughs) anyway so he put out this mag um which looks very the ones I'm seeing, it's he eventually sold them off to Starlog, but they started as zines, you know? I think he was, like, binding his own little thing and then eventually came up with enough money to actually, you know, put that thing out. Very interesting. So he's only had about, you know, 10 movies? Yeah. And it went to 2007. He actually died in 2006. That is, I did not know that. That's what I was just looking for. That's why it says here in his bio, he began 8mm shorts at the age of 12. Doler also published a MAD 
magazine type oh, spinoff yeah. called Wild. Right. Never heard of that. No. It says here he was the creator editor of Cinemagic magazine, which later sold to Starlog Group. Uh, he also created Amazing Cinema and Movie Club magazines. Huh. And vaguely remember Movie Club. Hmm. I don't remember any of those. So I mean, you all you can imagine, like you know, people that he knew and was friends with and family. You know, a lot of the like locations in his movies are like you know his basement, and you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. Probably rogue filmmaking the entire way. Yeah, not getting any permits, just grabbing no. a camera and going. Right. Exactly. You forgot the script. That's okay. It really doesn't <laughs> matter. We're just making it up as we go along. Uh, you know, that's the thing is that. Like Alien Factor in particular, Galaxy Invader is so dark. <laughs> I mean, just like the subject matter. I didn't ever really get into that one, but Alien Factor, it just has a charm to it. Plus, I've seen it 500 times uh, just with them making fun of it, <laughs> you know, as a commentary mm-hmm. track. But um, I guess, yeah, it started to grow on me. Alien Factor reads... A spaceship containing specimens for an intergalactic zoo crashes on Earth near a small backwoods town. The specimens escape, and soon the town folk are turning up mutilated. (laughs) Is that not the plot for Critters? (laughs) I think so. (laughs) This is 78, so I guess... I I see a trend here, though. I mean, like, we're going to have a lot of uh, spaceships. Yeah. Night Beast, 1982, Night Beast. reads, A creature from outer space crash lands in a small town and starts killing people. Now that sounds really familiar. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, I feel like that's kind of like Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2, you know? You're like, mm-hmm. I know we can do this better. We got more money now. I guess I've just seen Alien Factor uh, much more, but, uh, you know, when he's spoken about Night Beast as the everyone's favorite like alien factor it's got like three or four different monsters in it you know there's one monster that he's like kind of up on stilts a little bit or like walking on buckets or something and real crazy like bug bigfoot mismatch kind of thing you know and um they're pretty interesting did you ever see the sequel no i have not alien factor 2 Yes, called The Alien Rampage. Wow. Which reads, Witness the return of Baltimore's greatest alien terror in this monstrous saga. Watch in horror as alien space specimens escape to pillage the countryside, leaving pandemonium in their wake. If you're trying to make it a scary horror horror sci-fi, pandemonium might not be the word you want to use there. (laughs) And, yeah, pillaging. Pillaging. That's stealing people's, like, goods and stuff, right? (laughs) So, (laughs) So, again, maybe Critters, too. (laughs) Yes. That was in 2001, so. He has recent, you know, like, uh, interviews and stuff on... I I didn't watch very many of them, but he seems, you know, people enjoying them in an ironic way. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know what I mean? And then they talk to the creator. The creator is always like, you know, I was just a kid and, you know, I was just having fun. And I know they're bad. And, you know, that's why people like them and stuff like that. Don Doler, not so much, I don't think. I think he's like, this is my work you know like i'm not i'm not fucking around here this doesn't seem like many chuckles with don doler so we see him with joe ripple a lot joe ripple has they have both uh like for the movie called stakes so don okay. doler wrote it with joe ripple joe ripple directed it okay and it's a a vampire, whatever. Okay, yes. A vampire queen. Right. And is that just like a little short or something? No, it looks like a full-length feature. Hour and 23. Ooh, it looks like... Andrew Stevens and Shannon... Not Shannon. <laughs> What's her, what was her name? Shannon Doherty? 
No, I, that's why I got I got lost on her for some reason. Yeah. I looked up Andrew Stevens earlier, but I'm talking about. Uh, um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. What is yeah, her name? We'll skip over that. <laughs> no, I need to know now. <laughs> she's a playboy. She's a playmate, right? Yeah, I thought her name was Shannon. Shannon Tweed. Oh, Shannon Tweed. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Shannon Tweed. Who was I thinking of? Uh, Shania Twain? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I got lost there for a second. I was just kind of looking at back and forth between. Don Doler and this other guy. Uh huh. That's his collaborator. I guess so. Well, and also like a lot of these actors, they're all you know, they just play different roles in all of these. You know, it's the same bunch of actors that are in all of these movies. George Stover, um, Richard Ziesel, D Y S Z E L, um, Greg Doler. Kim Pfeiffer is Don Doler's daughter, who is in all of his movies. Okay. Just somewhat reluctantly, it looks like. <laughs> That's exactly what I would do. I don't care what you say. You're going to be in this film, and you're yeah. going to do, go fetch me my box of hands. Uh, yeah. She's like, <laughs> she's like, I will be in this movie, but I'm going to stare straight at the camera every time, and I'm just going to be standing here mad at you. That's it. There's a sheriff, an actor that's in all of his movies that always plays the sheriff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is insane. His name is Tom Griffith, I think. <laughs> but in the uh, in Alien Factor, he's kind of doing a uh, Sam Elliott. Um, what's the cop on the horse? Um, you've you've lost me. The cop on the horse. Walker, Texas Ranger. No. <laughs> no. Anyway, the cop on the horse. <laughs> it, um, this horse is a diabetic. <clears throat> you dumb son of a bitch. <laughs> is that our first dazed and confused reference? Uh, that would not be dazed and confused. It's not. Oh, not dazed and confused. Uh, I'm sorry. Back. It's uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm I'm googling cop on a horse because I can't <laughs> I can't go further with that. <laughs> And it pulls up six or seven oh, songs for some come reason. On. How could there be so many songs titled Cop on a Horse? Yeah, that's true. <laughs> All Canadian cops are on horses, I think. Yeah. They're called Mounties. Oh, that's right. McLeod. Oh, McLeod. Shit. From the clan McLeod. <laughs> that's right. If he had a sword in that show, oh, it would be a lot better. It would better. be so much better. Okay, but anyway, so Tom Griffith uh, plays, like, some law enforcement in all of Don Dohler's movies. And he looks like Sam Elliott in The Alien Factor. If you go to Night Beast, he got a perm, and it's, uh, it looks like if Sam Elliott got a perm and has a gray afro instead of a I have to long see Sam Elliott hair. Uh, it is oh, is that him on the ground? Oh, my gosh. It's a big wild. gray matted fro yeah it looks like a uh like a pomeranian's butt <laughs> anyway that made me laugh a lot yeah this beast uh, in night beast kind of looks like a uh charles band creation i was i was just about to say the same thing earlier as i was looking at this and i was like this has some real puppet master qualities to it you know um in that it's a crappy movie but um i'm <laughs> sorry I love the box art for all of his movies. Oh, they're, they're bizarre. Yeah. They look like trauma movies a little bit. But, um, so, and I think that the only reason that anyone knows who Don Dohler is, is because J.J. Abrams, that is one of his first movie credits, is for Night Beast. Huh. He was a big fan of the Cinemagic magazine. Okay, And so he contacted Don Dohler and said, look, if you're doing another movie, just you don't have to pay me. Just let me, you know, come and learn some stuff for Night Beast. He actually did some of the music. Him and another guy named Robert Walsh did the music for Night Beast. And Robert Walsh went on to do the score for G.I. Joe and like Transformers Saturday morning. Interesting. Cartoons. But yeah, so that's J.J. Abrams' first credit is for Night Beast in the music that's department. Pretty freaking cool. Yep. I was looking at Vampire Sisters. 
Yeah, I saw. I didn't click on that one. Written by Don Doler, but directed by Joe Ripple. Okay. An erotic tale of three of the world's most beautiful yet horrifying creatures who engage in the world's oldest profession. Eh? Eh? What in the world? I got to get my eyes on this. (laughs) Is it Vampire Sisters? Is that the one you're talking about? Yes, that's what it is. I am never going to watch that movie. (laughs) I don't think you should. Don Doler and Erotic should not even be, or Ripple for that matter, should not be making movies. And what was Crawler, another alien film, an alien that lands in the woods of northern Maryland. Let me guess. Birth from a meteorite from which it traveled in, the creature starts to roam the countryside looking for its first meal. You could have guessed that whole thing, right? <laughs> uh, Yeah. Are you sure that it doesn't say 10 to 12 drunk crackers chase the <laughs> alien into the woods and likely shoot themselves? There is one of those mob scenes in um, Galaxy Invader. Okay. <laughs> you've got to see Galaxy Invader. I, well, I, I think you've seen it before, but uh, the guy, there's a guy that he really, he always is one of the main characters in his movies. Well, there's only like three main characters, but Don Leifert. Okay. He is like a new guy in town. Uh, you know, he's interested in whatever's going on, you know, killings and, you know. Uh, but then he ends up being an alien himself, sent there to, ah. you know, like corral these aliens. Spoiler alert, but that's usually, that's the plot of these movies. Uh, but anyway, he plays a, you know, drunken redneck in Alien Factor. Okay. No, sorry, Galaxy and Galaxy Invader. I get them yeah. mixed up because they're literally the same movie, just filmed <laughs> differently. But yeah, he goes to the, you know, local bar to get everybody riled up and, it seems like someone is just filming a bar in Baltimore. They're all armed already. I don't even think they had to go home and get guns or anything. They just had them at the bar <laughs> with them. But yeah, they go out into the woods to <laughs> hunt this alien down. And yeah, he zaps one of the guys. See, Don Leifert played uh, the main, the lead in Fiend. Right. That's him with like stuff caked on his face. I have never seen that. Never movie. seen this either. An evil spirit possesses the corpse of a diseased man. Ugh. It says diseased, not deceased. It says diseased. Because <laughs> we've already said it was a corpse, so you assume yeah, he's deceased. So he is dis- diseased also. He's diseased corpse. Okay. It must absorb the life energy of the living in order for the corpse to not rot away. It moves into the suburbs where the neighbor begins to suspect something isn't right. Are you leaving words out or is that the, it moves into the suburbs. Okay. I guess it it was tired of the big city life. (laughs) Yeah. It it wanted to settle down, maybe start a possessed disease corpse family. Who knows? Yes. It just wanted to get away and, and you know, this relax. Yeah. Relax. Mow the lawn every Sunday like a normal diseased corpse. Wake up and drink coffee and just like look out the window. And And it's the damn neighbors that cause all the problems. Ain't that always the way? (sighs) You know, all you needed is an R to become friend instead of a fiend. (laughs) That's true. Is that the tagline for something? No, it should be. (laughs) You just made that up? That's good. All right. It's damn good. (laughs) <laughs> I'm use that. All right. Interesting. Don Doler. A lot of these movies are on YouTube, so you can go and check them out. He also has a lot of uh, just interview footage on YouTube. Cool. And yeah, like I said, you know, all of his special effects are really inventive. There's like claymation and basically everything that you could do on a Super 8 with the money that he had. So pretty cool stuff. I can quote the alien factor. That's how many times I've seen it. Wow. Why would aliens transport these? Are they taking them to another planet to start a zoo? I don't know. (laughs) We just watched one that was basically the same thing. It was like they just happened to have this like super dangerous thing, which is just (laughs) weird. Oh, terror vision. 
the oh. the thing in that is almost a but they're right. calling it, a, it pet. a pet though yeah All right same thing though all right i will be checking out don doler's stuff check out jj J. abrams one of the like hottest directors in the world thanking <laughs> don doler for letting him be in this crappy movie well you know roger corman too has helped a lot of people out See, it looks like uh, another guy by the name of George Stover. George Stover is frequently a actor. God. <laughs> He's he, frequently an actor. All right. <laughs> in, in Don Dollar's movies, he is yes. a, but man, he seems so unstable. I feel sorry for him, kind of, because... God, maybe he's not like that in just normal life. He's got 111 credits. You're fucking shitting me. Nope. And all of them look like they could have been made by Don Doler. Right. Exactly. MILFs versus zombies. <laughs> yeah, he plays the president. <laughs> oh, boy. Wow. Uh, he's in Manos Returns. I have not seen that. Is that out? Not. It was says 2018, yeah. Yeah, I've only like vaguely heard about it. Uh, that's an uh, hour and seven minutes long. Wow. <laughs> I think I could probably hold it together for that long to just to sit. Uh, Call Girl of Cthulhu. Uh, really? <laughs> I'm going to have to watch these. This guy looks like he's been in a ton of just bad movies. Invasion of the Reptoids. You know what's funny? Holy shit, my mind. Oh my god. Galaxy Invader, the one that Rift Tracks did. Okay. Um what's his name? <laughs> Grover? <laughs> what's his name? George Stover. Stover. Plays JJ Montague. JJ. His name's JJ. Okay, like JJ Abrams. It's a J period J period. <laughs> it's exactly like that. It's just like an onion. You're just peeling away layers. Yeah, I'm going to have to check out George Stover. Do that. He seems to be on the autism spectrum. <laughs> but manages to, what'd you say, 111 credits? 111 credits. Can't imagine. How many Golden Globes? Negative three. Can they ask you to return <laughs> trophies that you don't they own? take them back <laughs> retroactively. All right. Good stuff. Yep. I, Good stuff. I thought that people needed to know about that and the fact that they are all low budget and literally J.J. Abrams would be the only, well, I guess you dig deep enough and something, but I didn't think that I could get back to him by the stupid rules that we have imposed on ourselves. <laughs> so I figured I better bring it up. But if there is a way, I would like to watch like uh, Night Beast or something. Okay. Later. We can make that happen. Okay, so it's still my turn, isn't it? Am it's I... still your turn. If you okay. want to go straight into your uh, deep dive. Yeah, let's do that. Or do you want to need another uh, tangent of uh, monumental no. proportions? No, no, no. We need to We need to be laser focused right now. Laser. So I sent you a link in an email. Are you, re are you able to uh, look at that right now? Maybe. When did you send this to me? Just a few minutes ago. Oh, okay. Mr. Rogers? <laughs> yes, just click on it. Oh, I'm on it. Just to speed this along, this is a regular Mr. Rogers show. They go to an arcade, they bake a cake, stuff like that. But click, go to about minute eight in the uh, video. Well, okay, we're putting on our jacket. We're getting our shoes. Kind of kicking the box of hands farther into the closet. <laughs> Let's get those out of the view of the camera. <laughs> <laughs> All right, he's putting on his damn shoes. What am I missing here? Go to minute eight. That was, oh, eight minutes. Eight minutes. <sighs> I said it. When you say minute eight, I'm like a minute eight <laughs> seconds. Okay. That's how the British say it. It sounds I gotcha. fancier. Okay, so Mr. Rogers is playing Donkey Kong. Yep, well, playing Donkey, I mean, this kid here is playing Donkey Kong. And he's teaching him how to, you got to grab the mallet to kill yeah. the barrels. Yeah, now rip his spine out. Yeah. Which that is not what Mr. Rogers sounds like, but <laughs> right. <laughs> he looks a little startled when the guy comes up to collect the coins. Yeah, he's like, uh, I'm playing a game here. You have yeah. to do this now. I am planning an abduction. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> do you mind? Yeah, so um, the friendly guy that comes to collect the quarters from the Donkey Kong machine is young, young. 
Keith David. Yes. <laughs> Very young. Uh, yes. I mean, like, 20s, would you, wouldn't you? would you say? It's kind of hard to tell. When was this episode on, you know? That's, that's a good question. I don't think it says anywhere on here. Uh-uh. That is awesome. Well, it has to be the 80s, early 80s, I would say. So did you pick Keith David because he was a voice on uh, Gargoyles, the no cartoon? That was just a serendipitous uh, something that happened. Okay. He's been on my radar for quite a while. Oh, for sure, yeah. I, I, he was going to come up. He's so cool. I kind of dug around for that one, uh, which made me laugh when I saw it. Uh, he was a recurring character in 1983 to 1985 as Keith the Handyman in Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> I did not know that at all. That was after he played Childs. He looks no way young in Mr. Way. Rogers. There is no way that that is true, what you just said. That's what it's... I'm just say, I'm just stating what... Wow. In continuity of things here... 82 is the thing, and 83 to 85 was Mr. Rogers. Wow, that is crazy. Because I see him in that movie. I mean, so I wonder how old he was. Well, let's just go look. When was he birthed? 1956. Okay. Get out your calculators, kids. <clears throat> so he was he was 34. For the thing? For the 80s, so, no, 36. He does not look like he's in his 30s in this Mr. Rogers clip. No, no. No, he looks, he, he looks way younger. But then... I call bullshit IMDb. Maybe, maybe. But in the thing, he looks older, I think. Oh, yeah. And it could be because he has, like, a beard, kind of, and but still, I don't know. He I, He's just one of those guys It's hard to tell. Mm-hmm. Do you see what the credit is above Mr. Rogers on IMDb? The Whoopie Boy. <laughs> when are we going to do that? I think we're doing it right now. Yeah, I guess so. I definitely have a tab open. <laughs> <laughs> At all times, just waiting for it. <laughs> Dude, um, what is his name? Uh, Eddie Deason. Eddie Deason mm-hmm. is in that movie. I might rent this on Amazon when we quit doing it. <laughs> okay, so like you said, Keith David was somebody that we were going to talk about eventually because he's such a fucking badass badass in everything he does, but he is child's in the thing and one of my top ten characters. Mm-hmm. I just read that Blumhouse is going to be doing the thing. Yeah, John Carpenter had a little uh, mm-hmm. interview or something mentioning that. Man, I, they've got a lot of material. I mean, they could go anywhere with that. Mm-hmm. I would like to see a continuing story and don't try yeah. to redo the the original. That's just yes. Me. I didn't but, realize that Keith David was in Platoon. Oh yeah, dude, he's got a good line in that that I probably shouldn't repeat. On. <laughs> <laughs> Even this, <laughs> you know, maybe I just don't remember Platoon that well. Wow, really? I fucking love Platoon. That's a good movie. To know that Johnny Depp was in Platoon? Yeah. Know that. He's nope. like the radio guy. Yeah, dude. I saw it at the theater. Uh, He was in Missing in Action 3. Mm-hmm. What was Hot Pursuit? Um, oh, that was John Cusack. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. He's like, he misses a boat trip with his girlfriend or something and is like trying to get to wherever the hell they are. It's like... It's not Hawaii, but it's some like... Okay, so it's like planes, trains, and automobiles for John Cusack. Yeah. Okay. Robert Loggia's in it as a pirate. Jerry Stiller? Oh, yeah. This this is... Yeah, Ben Stiller's in it. Yeah, I just saw that. Hey, Miguel Angel Fuentes. Oh, see? Everything Puma just... Man. Puma Man. Puma Man. Yeah, his name's Vidalia. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh that's an onion. Um <laughs> What is his name? Vadino? <laughs> yeah, Bedin Bedinho. Bedinho. Anyway, Anywho. back to back to Keith David. Tell me what you got on him. Well, the best fight scene ever? 
best fight scene ever in They Live. And Rowdy Roddy Piper wants him to get wants him to put the sunglasses on. He probably could have asked very nicely. Yeah. <laughs> but that, no, they went straight to violence. Yeah. Guys, violence is not always the answer, even if you are a professional wrestler. Did we say that Cy Richardson was in They Live? Yeah. Yes. He works with a lot of like weird people that have definitely been mentioned on this podcast before. He won a Tony for a Best Supporting Actor in a Musical. Oh. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know. Um, he is from East Elmhurst in Queens. He's 6'2", which I fucking... He's like towers over everybody else he's in a scene with. Yeah. It doesn't say it in the trivia, but I'm just... I'm going to add it. A lot of the times confused with David Keith. Right. I'll put that in the... Uh, Wikipedia. I'll change the Wikipedia. Dude, I, I just stumbled upon George Buck Flower. Yes. Yeah. Who he was in, in They Live mm. as a drifter. <laughs> that guy has been in 160. Everything. Oh, my gosh. It goes on and on. He is the white guy version of um, the black guy that was in everything in those eighties movies. Yeah. <laughs> He's the, you know, the guy that, uh, that Patrick Swayze throws the keys to, you know, when he leaves to go to Texas or wherever. Okay. Yes. You know what I'm talking about? He was in weird science. This guy, but he was in a lot of, uh, John Carpenter shit. Right. So George Buck flower was in the fog. Oh yeah. 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 Escape from New York. Yes. <laughs> Star man. He he can be sober and like in a suit or whatever, but it still feels like he's got alcohol on him at some <laughs> point at, in some pocket. Uh, he was in Pumpkinhead, Sundown, The Vampire in Retreat. Oh, god. oh my god! This guy goes on and on. I have to come back to him. Yeah, too bad it's not who we're talking about. Nope. Um, but yeah, the, if you scroll down to trivia in IMDb, it eventually does say not to be confused with fellow actor <laughs> David Keith. Go. So at least they dotted that I. So Keith David, uh, he's been in how many things? Oh my God, it goes on forever. Yeah, he's done a ton of voice work because he has a... A voice? Awesome, deep oh. voice. 320 credits. God damn. Unbelievable. What a great career. But yeah, he was Goliath in uh, Gargoyles. He does the voice for Spawn in Mortal Kombat 11? Oh yeah, I read something about that because he was Spawn huh. for the animated series on HBO. That's badass. Yeah. I like often plays hot-tempered, irritable characters. Yeah, that checks <laughs> out <laughs> pretty much. He's never like just a calm, cool dude. He's usually in people's faces. At least my favorite roles that he does. He was in Volcano, Armageddon, Dante's Peak, and Deep Impact. Every, <laughs> that little two or three year period where everything was just exploding. and Yep. He just went from set to set. Yeah. That's hilarious. Huh, he was in ER for a few years playing uh, Pastor Watkins. Okay. I don't know if I can see him as a religious man. A man of the cloth. But he's also, like, can kill vampires or something, too. I will use this Bible as a weapon. Yeah, exactly. Or it's got, like, a gun in it or something. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> got a hidden switchblade. Yes. Yeah. If you click on these cartoons every once in a while, I do kind of want to, like, look some of these up. He's on Rick and Morty. But yeah, he's in all the like hot ones right now. I, as far as I know, mm -hmm. he's in Adventure Time, BoJack Horseman, which has been nominated for a bunch of awards. You didn't mention that he was in uh, the Puppet Masters. We oh, talked about boy. that just the other day. Yeah. Oh boy, Reality Bites. Yeah, I don't remember that. Oh yeah, he's in Community. Man, he has so many credits. He is in one Archer, which now I've got to find. Did you say he was in Roadhouse? No, I forgot. He has one tiny scene and no lines. <laughs> he might say one thing. He, I've read this before that he did have a bigger role. I mean, you know. They cut him out? 
Well, yeah, they cut him out. How kind, dare they? Kind of like the um, oh, what's that black girl's name that was in? She was in summer school. He taught her how to you know, right. Yeah, uh, mm-hmm. she's in Lost Boys, and you can see her back behind uh, the Frog Brothers, um, mm-hmm. like checking somebody out or something. And I had her name just a second ago. I get her mixed up with Stacy Dash. I think it starts with an F. Okay, that narrows it down to. <laughs> It, her last, her middle name's like Joe, isn't it? Something like that. Oh yeah, Kelly Joe Minter. There we go. Thank you. We saw her at Frightmare one of one of those years. Thank you. F is not in her name whatsoever. <laughs> no, it's not. In 1979, he was in a movie called Disco Godfather. Yeah. Yep. With Rudy Ray Moore. Now I have to find that. It says he's uncredited, so he's probably just barely in it. As an excuse to watch it. Rowdy Rowdy Piper's head is so big. <laughs> oh, what an interesting career. Yeah. What else he got in his trivia? Um, he was on Murder, She Wrote. Um, wow, is that Edward Furlong? He is looking rough these days. Well, he started a Kickstarter not too long ago to buy a new liver. So that cannot be huh. good. I think he thinks that's how it works. Maybe it does work like that. I want to start a Kickstarter because I want uh, perkier tits. How's that? Yeah. I think actually a lot of people do that. Oh, okay. (laughs) I mean, if it's like find 10,000 people to give you a dollar. Yeah. If it was that easy, then our podcast would be funded. Yeah, that's true. Mm, Get on that, would you? What? He went to Juilliard. Keith David? Yes, for singing, I think. Wow. But that is just... I've never heard him sing. He said, one of his quotes is like, the doctor slapped my ass and I started singing. So, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not joking, it's in there. I came out singing, the doctor slapped me on the head, sorry, and I started singing. Yeah, that's where he got the Tony Award for Jelly's Last Jam. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. Yeah, I mean, he's in all of our favorite movies. Oh, yeah. How can he not be? Oh, my God. Michael loves um, the one with him, with uh, Emilio and uh, Charlie Sheen. Um, Are you talking about Men at Work? Men at Work. Oh, my God. I can't remember that movie. I do not have the fondness for it that Michael does. I mean, he's probably the best thing in the movie. But no, very, very prolific career, man. He's yeah. Oh, he's in the Nice Guys. Did you ever see that with uh, Ryan Gosling and Russell Crowe? Yeah. Okay. That was a good movie. Very interesting. We can go through. We could freaking click on his shit and go on for days yeah. and days. But again, I'm like, man, I would want to be a voice actor. It just sounds like it's probably like kind of boring and repetitive, but. Kind of like what we do now. That's <laughs> very true. That's very true. I've just rethought my entire existence. I'm getting ready to talk about another voice actor whose credits go on and on, oh. which I may or may not have mentioned before, but interesting. I am okay. using him today. Okay. Well, we're almost done with... Uh, we could keep talking about Keith David for yeah, ever. I'm sure he'll pop up in something and we'll do this again, probably. Yeah. But yeah, watch him in Mr. Rogers and um, the Whoopi Boys. And you better have already seen the thing. Yeah, we don't even need to tell you guys that. Can we get people to to argue with us that somebody's posted that, you know, you don't see his breath at the end of the thing? Uh, I've seen all those and I just ultimately, ultimately, I like not knowing. So, yeah, it's better to leave it open. Yeah. But Childs is a great, great character. Although that is, I mean, you're you're right in that it does leave it open for the story to go on, you know? Oh, yeah. One of them could have made it out of, I mean, you know, so, yeah. Well, you want to slam straight into your guy, or do you want to- Let's go straight into it. What do you say? Okay, voice actors is the uh, connective tissue here. Mm, Maybe. Maybe. Because we just watched Gargoyles, Mm -hmm. we can talk a lot, a lot about Gargoyles, but I I did go down 
just to look at Scott Glenn in backdraft and started clicking through all sorts of backdraft. Yeah. Good movie. I definitely watched it several times. Kurt Russell dies at the end of that one. Uh, spoiler alert. <laughs> oh, sorry. If you guys <laughs> haven't seen that, then you don't need to. We just gave it away. You can save that two hours. Yeah, exactly. Why don't you go ahead and say that uh, Scott Glenn ended up being the bad guy? Oh, he was, wasn't he? Yeah. <laughs> There's that scene of him like wetting his pants and just. <laughs> what was his reasoning for that? That the fire department wasn't like getting funding or something? Or I was don't he trying know. something like that? I mean, he was trying to cover up like some weird thing that they did. Who has a craggier face, Scott Glenn or Lance Hendrickson? Hmm. In a real crag off, who did? That's pretty good. I mean, there's a lot of crevices. Oh my god, it's like a couch cushion with Lance Hendrickson. You got to like <laughs> get into that those hard to reach areas. I know there's some coins down here. Let me get back to. Let us have it. Out with it. I'm going back to gargoyles. Okay. Gargoyles. The Bernie Casey vehicle. I started to go down with Scott Glenn and decided against it. I thought we needed to go down Bernie Casey. Okay. Because okay? Bernie Casey's been around for quite a while. And it, yeah. did, did we talk that he died in 2017? I don't know if we did or not. I don't know either. Complications following a stroke. But uh, he was born in 39, which makes him... 78 when he died. Yeah. So... Uh, Bernie Casey was a former pro football player. I think we mentioned that, but I definitely so. did not uh, elaborate on it or anything. Was good friends with Stan Winston, hmm. who did the makeup effects for Gargoyles. Right, right, right. Of course. So, huh? very interesting. Interesting. I like the idea of Bernie Casey and uh, Stan Winston hanging out. But Bernie was only in 81 things, 81 credits. I just expected him to go... A lot further than that. I'm mm-hmm. not saying 81 is something to that's snark a at. Or, yeah, yeah, it's a for lot sure. still. Yeah. He was in a 1975 movie called Cornbread, Earl and Me. I <laughs> I know that name. I don't know why. Because Moses Gunn is in that. Oh, my gosh. Yeah, he did a few, yeah, like a couple of kind of black exploitation movies. Uh, the Martian Chronicles, Trapper John... Was he a wounded soldier in a mash at all? (laughs) He was in Never Say Never Again. He was in Brian's song. (laughs) Great. And my favorite, Revenge of the Nerds. Yeah. Yeah. What was his name in that? (laughs) U.N. Jefferson. Right. The head of the Tri-Lamb. Right. Uh, Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure, of course. Mm -hmm. Uh, Another 48 Hours. Under mm -hmm. Siege. Street Night. Yes, that Jeff Speakman in it. That's what it was. Oh, God. <laughs> is he the guy. one that kind of went on to do like Christian movies and stuff? Is that what happened to him? I'm I don't know. He, sure. He had like several martial arts movies and then just disappeared. Yeah. He beat people with sticks. And that was his big thing. No, he only has 21 credits, so he just kind of disappeared. That's probably for the best. Yeah. I'll do a deep dive on him. Bring him back. Okay. I hear you, Mr. Speakman. Bernie Casey, though, he was in In the Mouth of Madness. Since we're gonna yes. keep going we're gonna keep dancing around mm-hmm. John Carpenter. Let's mm-hmm. just go into it. JC. And I think we could talk about In the Mouth of Madness for a long time. Yeah. It it simply doesn't fit the the conditions that we have no. vaguely laid out for the podcast. I think we'll get there eventually where we're like just doing like a movie that came out a couple of weeks ago or something. Mm-hmm. But yeah, no, but that's fine. That's fine. It doesn't. In matter. the mouth of madness. We love it as everybody that we've talked about. I even looked at Francis Bay. Uh-huh. She played the, uh, was the hotel yes. clerk. Had yes. her husband like chained up or whatever at her feet, <laughs> yes. and she's like kicking at him. Yes, right. Hilarious. Yeah, I love her. She was the grandma in Happy Gilmore. Right. Yeah. I yeah I remember that. She has a hundred and seventy three credits. Yeah, she's in Repo Chick. Yes, 
I saw that too. I went down a little dive on her because I thought, man, She's, how interesting is she? Because I don't know that I've ever known her to be young. Exactly. What What did she look like when she was young? But no, she's uh, always been old. She was in Krippendorf's tribe. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. A movie I never wanted to see. She's in The Karate Kid Part 3. Oh, uh, is she like... She plays Mrs. Milo. I have no idea who that is. It might be. Oh, yeah, I know exactly who it is. Oh, my God. I have total recall for Karate Kid 3. <laughs> she's the she's the lady that lives next to uh, Ralph Macchio and his mom. Oh, no. She lives next door to Mr. Miyagi. Okay. And, uh, and Ralph Macchio goes over to see him, and uh, she, like, yells something at him, like, He's gone! I, you know, but... <laughs> Anyway, wow, I, I, I've that's amazing that you could pull that out. She read her line a lot better than that. It was, <laughs> but yeah, she's Miss Pickman in uh, in the Mouth of Madness, mm-hmm. and uh, Pickman, I think it's called Pickman's Model, is a H.P. Uh, Lovecraft right. story. So yes. every everybody's yes. name is probably something to do with. Very interesting. She was in Blue Velvet. Yeah, that I don't remember her in that either. And I looked at this. She was in Nomads. <laughs> okay. Okay. Like I've never that. seen this. It's uh, James Bond, right? Uh, yeah, it's Pierce Brosnan. Pierce Brosnan. It's a directed and written by John McTiernan. It has a cool cover where he's doing like kind of a light jog in a jacket, mm-hmm. and then there's a crazy like energy being above him or yes. something. And. It says a French anthropologist specializing in nomadic groups moves to Los Angeles with his wife and starts following a group of sinister street punks. Right, right. Who seem to live and move around in a black van, but they aren't what they seem. Yeah, they're like chuds or something. I know. I have totally not seen this movie. <laughs> I have. But it did not even like register for me, so it must have been it must have been bad. I looked at this because I thought maybe this might be something we want to get back to at some point. Uh, Adam Ant, Mary Warnov. Oh, hmm. in Nomads, yes. <laughs> okay, and Leslie Ann Down. I was like, holy crap! Hmm. Okay, man. There's like a four year period where Adam Ant has just wanted to be in everything. Hmm. I got a juicy uh, Adam Ant movie that we should do Ooh. later. So, so anyway, I did not go down a Francis Bay hole. That sounded horrible. <laughs> Bay hole. Instead, I went down a guy we've talked about before, William Von Hamburg. Okay. Right? You know who he is. We talked about him before. He was in The Postman. Okay. Yes. That yep. guy. The meaty face guy. Meaty face. We've talked about his career before. We don't necessarily have to go, oh, wait a minute. No, no, holy shit. Not that guy. (laughs) I'm sorry. Willem von Homburg is Vigo. God damn. (laughs) Okay. Oh, I totally got lost in my notes here. Uh, Okay. okay. Yes. Just another big disturbing face to look at. (laughs) He was, yeah, he's one of the bad guys in uh, Die Hard. Yes. Yeah. And we've talked about him. Who was the other guy I was just talking about? The Postman. Um, oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was in uh, Lord of Illusions. and uh, It's yeah. Daniel Von Bargen is that guy. You're you see, way off. I got the Vons in there. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't think. When, I, when I typed that in, it changed it to Wilhelm. And there's literally like 50 people that are Wilhelm Von something. Wow. So, popular name. So, Wilhelm von Homburg. Jason von Walker. I like it. <laughs> I can use that. I'm going to use that, Johnny. But yes, um, we've talked about him just because Ghostbusters 2, yep. Night of the Warrior, we brought him up because... Oh, right, right, right. I know we talked about that. It was Lorenzo Lamas, mm-hmm. written by Thomas and Griffith. We talked about that just recently, in fact. Is llamas the plural for llama? <laughs> like two llamas? <laughs> I don't know. Only if they're in mid-coitus. <laughs> oh, okay. 
Um, oh, my cheeks hurt. <laughs> All right. So, but Wilhelm von Hamburg. Homburg. God, what, Homburg. I can't even say his name anymore. And wouldn't you know what the first thing that comes up? Rest, old wrestling pictures. Oh, That exactly. I did not want to see. But since I was talking about it earlier, I did not talk about the parody Silence of the Hams. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. I vaguely remember that. A federal agent. Joe D. Foster (laughs) is currently investigating a serial killer helped by a doctor animal who is isolated in a maximum security jail. Dom DeLuise. Yes. Billy Zane. Oh, my gosh. uh, Martin Balsam. (laughs) (laughs) Billy Zane at the height of his career. (laughs) Stuart Pankin. John Astin. Bubba Smith. Whoa. Rip Taylor. Did you already say Martin Balsam? Yes, I did. Man. <laughs> I've never seen this. I No, don't. nor have I. Uh, not that I really wanted to. I, I knew it existed. But what's weird is you scroll down, it seems like a Mel Brooks movie from this period. Yeah. And his, you know, but it's easy. Oh, oh I get it. It's written and directed by Ezio Grigio, right. which I think so who is, is which I think is is a, an alias. <laughs> doesn't that sound like it sounds fake? It sounds fake. It has to be right. No, there's a picture of him. He looks mm-hmm. like if Dustin Hoffman was good looking. <laughs> but he also did a Ezio Grigio. Is that his name? (laughs) Whatever. I think so. (laughs) It rolls off the tongue pretty easy, though. He also did Dracula Dead and Loving It. Okay. So parody movies here. Dracula Dead and Loving It is a Mel Brooks movie. So I'm going to assume... They're connected, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 2001 A Space Travesty. No. I don't like that at all. So, anyway... We're not going to watch Science of the Hams. I wouldn't do that to you. Although it does have Phyllis Diller, Shelley Winters. Oh. (laughs) I would do a parody movie. John Carpenter is in this. Keep on scrolling down. Eddie Deason is in this. Oh, my God. Peter (laughs) DeLuise. John Landis. It goes on and on. Henry Silva, Marshall Bell. I didn't huh. see Henry Silva in there. Holy, it has everybody in it. Tony Cox. But it also has a guy by the name of Larry Storch. Uh, <laughs> yeah. He's an Eddie Deason, right? I thought I brought him up before, but maybe I hadn't. Wait, this that's... guy has done so many voice credits. Okay. And... But he got his start in F Troop. Okay. Well, I would say that. He's had a ton of shit before then, but he was in a lot of shorts. Coco the Clown. Yes. Those are the short films he was in. I still can't find him. Uh, his name's Larry, right? Larry. Larry Storch. And as soon as you click on him, you know where we're going to go. But he was in Get Smart. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, I do see now. All right, cool. <laughs> the Batman Superman Hour. He played the Joker. He's played the Joker's voice in plenty of things. Huh, interesting. That was in 1968 and 69 he played the Joker. Okay. He was in the Debbie Reynolds show, Sabrina the Teenage Witch cartoon. That's in 1969. I didn't know Sabrina the Teenage Witch was that old. Um, There's a movie called Ghostbusters that he is in. (laughs) That is Hmm. in like the 60s. Speaking of Vigo, yeah, <laughs> uh, I do not like F Troop. No, uh, can't I can't say I've ever seen it. So 1975 was that what you're talking about? The Ghostbusters. Yes, it has Billy Barty in it. A comedy family fantasy. Right. It looks like a TV show, or look like a, a Carol Burnett type situation. What didn't one of the Ghostbusters cartoons have a pet gorilla? Two guys and their pet gorilla hunt spooks. 
This is live action. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> oh my god. Is this too much? Do you remember what I'm talking about? That there was a Ghostbusters cartoon and then there was another one that was crappy. Crappy, and I swear it had a gorilla. Man, I I, I Oh I, I don't know. I wish I did. Also, this is weird. Have we done something to where now all of this is like, like we've said stuff out loud and like now IMDB literally is an AI just fucking with us? Yeah. Oh, I believe it's true. Larry Storch was in a TV show called Tenafly. <laughs> what, do, what does that word mean? Hmm. This is too much. <laughs> I like it when we're both just silent, just oh. like <laughs> trying to get to the bottom of something. Trying to find something that makes sense here. Okay, Tenafly is a borough in New Jersey. Like a donkey? <laughs> just, just the name of a donkey in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's a city in New Jersey, so I'm not looking that up anymore. But these are all questions that I just <laughs> don't care but I still demand answers. <laughs> he was an alias Smith and Jones. That was the guy from, uh, remember we were talking about that alien movie where they, it's a mummy, but it's really an alien. Like the Egyptians buried a alien. Right. Okay. Yes. And he's looking for his stones yes. and stuff. Yeah. I watched part of it the other day. The main character is either Smith or Jones. I can't remember which one. <laughs> <laughs> but Larry Storch, as you already know, is in our next film. Yay. Without warning. Mm -hmm. I didn't think you'd have a problem with that. Nope. I just looked up Larry Storch, though. He uh, he was paid $750 for being in Without Ooh, Warning. Ouch. <laughs> like they just paid him in like uh, whiskey for being in this movie. That's, it. that's why I think Jack Palance probably just got paid in booze, too. Mm -hmm. Martin Landau's looking. He's frozen on the embedded <laughs> trailer for this. He's looking particularly unhinged. Oh, yes. He's got long hair. That's awesome. So I'm going to read it out here. Okay, do it. An alien creature stalks human prey. That's all you get. That's it? <laughs> That's it. I mean, I actually... Okay. I'm in. I know you were throwing off because I didn't put any punctuation in there. Right. No, no, no. <laughs> exactly. I was like, uh, and? This is directed yeah. by Graydon Clark. I know. Ooh, that's opening up a whole can of worms. Can I just say on the, on the like, cover art, it says it preys on human flesh. No, it preys on human fear. It feeds on human flesh. Mm -hmm. Which. I dig that. I do, too. And the cover is amazing that poster like art oh, i love it that's uh, so cool and i watched this film i this one went missing in my archives from the mid 80s all i could remember is the flying discs right yes exactly the alien weapon right the live alien weapons was, i loved it yeah which they kind of ripped off again in um we come in peace that one with dolph lundgren mm -hmm. they kind of did the same thing but way crappier years later than this one. You know what I mean? They couldn't figure it out. This one actually did that effect like better. And this was 1980. When was uh, they coming? Yeah. No, that was the 90s, I think. That's what I think. Yeah. So the older movie did it better. Did you see that uh, Officer Dogface is in this? <laughs> Talking about David Caruso? No. Oh, Oh, you're talking about Neville Brand? Yes. Sergeant Dogface, excuse me. <laughs> Meaning we could have gone to this movie a long time yeah, ago. Yeah, sure. Lots of, lots of threads. But David Caruso, I do not remember him being yeah. this film. Is he just one of the kids? Maybe. Yeah, because in the 80s, he wouldn't have. So Rambo was in 80. Like 82? Yeah. So Does that sound he was, right? He looked like he was in his... Early 20s in Rambo. First Blood is 82. Uh, he was born in 56, so 24 years old in Without yeah. Warning. Okay. Which also, Without Warning, uh, I guess, had an, a previous title of It Came Without Warning. <laughs> which, as the years went on, that 
was a less desirable. <laughs> Either that or somebody really wanted to use it and they like somehow bought it or something. But lots of fun. We're going to have a good time with yeah, this Yeah, lots of people in this. Um, you know, Kevin Peter Hall is the alien in this. Mm-hmm. That is correct. He's the guy that was the alien in Alien. No, he was not. He was. Uh, oh, that's right. That's right. He was he the was predator. predator and predator. Right, right, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> he was the predator. And what's the name of that movie? Oh, uh, guy had a big like fish face and a yeah, predator. <laughs> he was also Harry and Harry and the Hendersons. Oh, my God. But yeah, he died at a young age. We've talked about him before. Right, right. Oh, my God. He was the monster in the closet. He is seven foot two and a half inches. Sheesh. Holy moly. God, that makeup for Harry and the Hendersons, for Harry, is really disturbing. <laughs> Don't you think? <laughs> it's meant to be lovable. Saw that I probably a couple of times in the theater, but I don't think I remember Monster in the Closet. Well, I was going to say there are a few like kind of, I guess, direct to video movies when I was younger that, um, what movie we're just talking about? I'm completely lost now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, where's what that warning? Okay, here we go. Man. Oh, I lost it. I completely lost what I was talking about. You lost it again. You found it, and then it's gone again. I just needed to get back on solid ground. Cameron Mitchell is also in Without Warning. Okay. Um, He's like Commander Santa from uh, Space Mutiny. Okay. You know, the guy that wears like the long flowy robes and has a beard. I like him. He's he's in a ton of uh, MST movies. Yeah, that's a real... And so, Without Warning is available. You can watch it on uh, YouTube? No, it is on Daily Motion. Okay. All right. But if you want to watch it for free, that's what you got. Okay. Yeah, just try to have your virus protection up and running. <laughs> <laughs> but it looks like a good transfer. Um, I've watched things on Daily Motion before. But no, you can watch... I've got all sorts of clips I'll be putting on. On our Facebook, cool. our, our group, if you want awesome. to see more of the weird shit that I look up and post about these different films that we're watching, I have a lot of fun with it. I also check us out on Twitter Yep, and all the social media crap. If we're not in, on there, then that's because I don't care. Um, yeah, we just got our MySpace <laughs> finished and now people are telling us nobody's on there anymore. <laughs> that's a lot of waste and it looks time. great <laughs> yeah look we finally got like that black background with green writing so that everybody can really <laughs> dig in and read <laughs> go to the optometrist with jabbing <laughs> eye pain um yeah all right i think solid work here today yep i think we did it whatever it was uh, Krista just, uh, contacted me earlier and saying that she'll have a review for the beast within. Awesome. So hopefully I'll be posting that later. It'll be up on the website for a month now since, uh, I work out so late. That seems like a long time ago. Beast within. Yeah. Oh, it was. <laughs> oh, right. We're talking, uh, we've been on the air now f- since February. Oh, that's why I'm so exhausted. Exactly. All the time. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, All right. Buy our merch. We need some uh, income. Yeah. We'll, we're going to make up some nude uh, designs here. Nude designs? Yeah. Uh, uh, did, you heard that correctly. New and nude designs. <laughs> <laughs> Nightly and nudely. Oh, speaking of, I would love to do the nude bomb. Oh, yeah. For the sure. Get Smart movie. Oh, yep. That was a lot of fun. Yeah, don't drop it in Florida. (laughs) But anywhere else should be good. (laughs) All right, are we signing off? You got anything else to add? No, I I don't. I'm I'm excited for next week. This is a good pick. All right. All right, until then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
been listening to The Yarn Wall, an M.T. Cornfield production. Tune in next week for the 1980s sci-fi alien horror slasher Without Warning. You can watch Without Warning on Daily Motion for free. We want to thank Keegan for that awesome opening to the Goratorium. And if you want to shred your axe skills, send us something and we'll lube it up and slide it in. Again, please like, share, and subscribe, then rinse and repeat. We appreciate your support. If you have any movie suggestions, or just want to tell us how much we really suck, you can contact us at moviemoratorium at gmail.com. Thanks for listening, and long live VHS. So somebody's a-doing the nasty.